So after the third week of the European clay court season, we had some big matches and some big results in this one. Huge tournaments on the cards. We had Barcelona, Stuttgart being the two big ones, and some big winners as well outside the top 10. So let's have a look at who actually won last week. So we had five tournaments in total, but on the WTA, we only had two, starting with Rouen, with Sloane Stephens taking out Lynette, 612662, to get her first title for a while. And over in Stuttgart, the big one, the WTA 500. Rabakina drives home the Porsche, takes out Kostruk in the final, 6262. Also beats Fiontek along the way, so Rabakina having a great week in her first week on the clay for 2024. Over on the men's side, we had three events, starting with a 250 in Munich, where Struff won his first ever title at the age of 33 took out fritz 7563 so very happy for struff there over in bucharest a new tournament on the atp fuchovic winning his title against navoni 6475 so the veterans there getting wins and then over in barcelona casper rude beating city pass in the revenge match from monte carlo he wins 7563 to lift the biggest trophy of his career Never won anything over a 250. Now, he has an ATP 500. And beating City Pass to do it after what happened last week in Monte Carlo is great to see. So, really fun to see those guys winning those titles. And they all got boosts in the rankings. All right, let's have a look at the players outside the top 10 who got a boost in the rankings. Starting with Kostruk, who went six spots up to number 21 in the world. That is a career high for her. Struff, he also goes up four spots to 24 in the world. Not a career high yet, but after winning his first title, gets that boost. And Stevens. She goes up six spots as well to number 33 in the world after winning a title as well this week. So three players there outside the top 10 that had great results, getting a boost. Players that went down in the rankings, Musetti. He goes down five spots to number 29 in the world after dropping points from Barcelona last year. Dan Evans, he goes down 20 spots to number 69 in the world, also dropping points from this time last year. And Bedosa, she goes down to number 100 in the world, seven spots lower than last week, again after dropping points from Stuttgart last year. So a little bit of a shame there for Bedosa, especially considering the injury she also got from that tournament. But... Players there that have to do well in Madrid to try and boost their rankings for the next week. Okay, let's start on the WTA now because we did have a lot of players playing last week in Stuttgart, but no change at the top, which Fiontech, still number one despite losing in the semifinals and losing her title in that Stuttgart event. Sabalenka stays at number two with Goffin number three and Rebecca at number four. Pagula stays at five with Zachary at six. Was a little change in the middle though with Von Drusova overtaking Zhang to go to number seven after making the semifinals in Stuttgart and Zhang losing early. She goes down to number eight. Jabir stays at number nine, and Ostapenko rounds out the top 10 for this week. So no major changes, despite having 500 points on the line. But of course, next week in Madrid, 1,000 points are on the line, and some big names have a lot of points to defend. Sabalenka and Fiontech especially. So we might see some changes next week, depending on who does well in Madrid. It's a big week on the clay season. All right, over to the race of the finals, and things are starting to look interesting, with Fiontech still at number one, but we're back in a closing the gap. At number two, Sabalenka at three and Collins at four. But Koga Goff, she goes up to number five, pushing Zhang down to number six after she made the quarterfinals and Zhang only made it to the round of 16. And Kostyuk back into the race of the finals, up to number seven, which is five spots higher than last week, leapfrogging a lot of players, and she deserves it. She's having a great season. Made a couple of big finals, of course, had a great run at the Australian Open as well, so really having a good season. Paolini stays at number eight. Ostapenko, she went down two spots to number nine. Kellen Sky went down to number 10, and Kazakina. Falls out of the top 10 completely because of Kostyuk getting the leap over all of them. So, some interesting changes there. And of course, with Madrid coming up, expect more changes in a couple of weeks. Over on the men's side of things, we didn't have as many big names playing. And definitely no one up the top played. So, Djokovic, he stays at number one with Sinner at number two. And Alcaraz at number three. Medvedev, he stays at four with Zverev at five. Rude, despite winning in Barcelona, stays at number six. With Pass staying at number seven. Rublev at eight. Herkatch at nine. And Dimitrov. Stays at number 10 for now, but of course, Madrid, 1,000 points up for grabs, especially with Alcaraz, who has 1,000 points to lose because he can't gain any points by playing that event. He can only save them and maintain his ranking. He has a lot on the line. Djokovic isn't playing, so that helps. But in order to overtake Sinner, he's going to probably have to wait a few weeks because he's had so many good results this time last year. But yeah, there is a lot of points up for grabs next week. So really interested to see the bottom half of this top 10. The guys outside the top 10 are only a couple hundred points behind, and it could get real interesting. Over to the race of the finals, and no change at the top with Sinner staying at one and Medvedev at number two. But Kasper Ruud, he goes up to number three, pushing Zverev down to number four after he wins the biggest title of his career. Pass also gets a boost, goes up to number five, three spots higher than last week, with Dimonor staying at six. Alcaraz gets pushed down to number seven, two spots lower than last week, with Dimitrov also going down a spot to number eight. Djokovic stays at nine, and her catch stays at number 10. But yeah, it's crazy there with Sinner 
He's almost double Medvedev, who's at number two. So it just shows how good Sin has been, not only just by winning this season, but also the tournaments that he has won this season, getting so many points. So there it is. They are the rankings. No big changes, I guess, to the top 10 yet. But like I said, Madrid, crazy next week. And some of the big names are missing. Of course, Pagula's not playing. Djokovic's not playing. But... The majority of the top 10 for both the men and the women are playing, and that is going to really be interesting to see how the top 10 looks in a couple of weeks. And then, of course, Rome after that, another 1,000 points. Again, rankings before the French Open. The next two events, they are critical if you want to get in the top eight uh, seeds for the French Open. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the most surprising part of the rankings for you this week? Has there been a surprising part? I guess there hasn't really. I mean, what's the most surprising result this week is probably a better question. We're back into beating Triantec on clay. That was pretty shocking. You know, Kostruk beating a couple of top 10 players over in Stuttgart as well. That was pretty crazy. But there it is, the rankings for this week with Madrid coming up next.